Hello everybody, welcome back to another Team Fortress 2 guide. We will now cover how to host a competitive match by renting a server provided courteously by serveme.tf. These servers are ready to use, pre-configured, and pre-installed with useful plugins. They are meant to be used for private personal use, including regular matches, jump maps, competitive matches, and MGE mod. Unfortunately, these servers cannot be used for MVM due to resource limitations. We will cover how to navigate the website and how to configure and access a server. Useful in-game commands to manage the server will also be shown. ServeMe has two websites that you can access. Websites include serveme.tf for European users and na.serveme.tf for North American users. Choose the one that is most appropriate for yours. In order to rent a server, you must first log into your Steam account using the button found on the top right of the front page. This is to allow you to access details about your server and to reserve one before needing it. Once you are back on the front page, you will have a couple of buttons under the welcome text. In order to make things straightforward and to teach you how to customize your server, we will ignore the Get Cloud Server and the One Click Server buttons. Press Get Server in order to begin renting your very own Team Fortress 2 server. After clicking the Get Server button, you will be brought to a page where you can configure your server reservation. The first two dialog boxes will feature date and time and are labeled start at and ends at. These configure the time frame your reservation will last. Your server will only be reserved for a limited time. That is why it is wise to book in advance so that you can get a server location that best fits you. But if there is a server available that you want to use immediately, you can leave these settings alone for a default reservation of two hours. If available, you can extend your reservation later on if no one has booked one in 30 minutes if you need more time, which will be covered later. Below the reservation boxes, you will see a drop down list featuring servers and then a ping measure box. No one likes playing with 200 ping. That is why it is best to choose your server location carefully. For example, in North American competitive matches, players can reside in any part of the United States, the West Coast, East Coast, South, etc. Ping from coast to coast range from 100 to 150 milliseconds. That is why the most fair servers and most widely used for competitive tend to be Chicago or Dallas as they are in the middle of the United States. If player location isn't an issue, you can choose a server that is closest to you. Below the server drop down list is a ping measure that will display your ping relative to the server. You can choose a server by clicking on the drop down arrow and then selecting one. Each listing will have a name or an acronym that describes the server location, like DAL standing for Dallas or Obama being for some Chicago servers. Immediately below the ping box, you will find the password box. Below that is the Archon password, and two steps below that will be the STV. The password box is where you can modify the password players are going to need to join the server. If you don't change it, it will default to a random value. The Archon password is used for operating the server. It gives anyone that types the Archon address to their Team Fortress 2 in-game console the ability to execute server commands like map changes and SV underscore cheats. Be extremely careful on giving this out and only do so to yourself and those you trust. If you don't change it, it will default to a random value. The STV password is used for those wishing to access the Source TV, a spectator server that shows a delayed live demo file. This isn't important if you are playing with friends, but in competitive leagues, in-game spectators aren't allowed. If no password is set, TV will be the default password. Below the Archon password but above the STV password, you'll find a drop-down box featuring map names. The map chosen will be the first loaded and can be set by selecting the drop down list. The list will display every map available hosted by ServeMe, so what you're going to want to do is to use the search box. In order to find a specific map, you will need the specific file name. For example, the map process will be named cp underscore process underscore final one. In the description, you will find the names of common map files. Below the STV password, you will find two check boxes. I recommend leaving the enable plugins box checked as some maps that require plugins like MGE mod will break. Even if you are only using the server casually, STV demos will not upload to demos.tf unless explicitly told to. So you can leave demos.tf checked. Finally, below the checkboxes you will find three sections that refer to competitive configuration. Server config chooses a file that contains commands that configure the server for a specific mode once it is launched. There are a lot of configurations, so check up on your competitive league's guidelines in order to decide which config works best for you. Conveniently, both RNGL and UGC league configurations are available on the list prefixed as UGC underscore formats written as 6v6 or 9v9 or RGL 
underscore. Formats written as sixes, sevens, or Highlander. The naming schemes for these files usually go as league underscore format underscore game mode underscore match type. For item whitelist, you can leave it selected as league as we will be choosing the whitelist ourselves. For the league whitelist, we will want to choose the weapon whitelist slash ban list that corresponds to the server config. In the description will be some presets to allow you to quickly configure these settings in case you aren't sure which configuration files to choose. Once you have everything set, you can just hit save and your server will boot up. It will send you to a page where you will be able to view the information necessary to access your server in-game. You will be using the console to connect to the server instead of joining through Steam. In order to open the console, you will need to have it enabled. In order to do so, you must go to Options or Gear Icon, Keyboard, Advanced, Enable Developers Console. You can then open the console using the tilt key, the squiggly key found to the left of the one key and above tab. On the server information page you will find multiple sections. Below the actions will be the connect info. This section contains the address and password needed to connect to your server. You must copy and paste it in the entirety into your in-game console and then hit enter to join the server. You can then send this address to anyone else you want to join. They too must input it into their console. In the Archon section will be the address for the Archon passer. As stated before, this will basically give you administrative privileges for the server. So only you yourself should input this into your console and anyone else you trust. Do not send this to anyone if they are only connecting to the server to play. When you do paste the command containing the address into the console, nothing will happen, except a small notification in the console log. You can execute the command on the main menu or in server. There will be a list of useful commands later in the video and in the description. And the STV connect info section will contain the command to connect to the STV. Give this to any spectator you do not want to connect to the real server. They will not be able to chat with the players in game or join a team, yet they can chat to anyone connected to STV. That pretty much does it as setup goes for the serveme.ts service. It will last however long the reservation was made for. Or you can, as gentlemen would, click the end button on the info page if you are done with it early. In order to quickly and easily modify anything after launching the server, you can use the in-game console to execute commands. As stated before, in order to use server commands, you must first copy and paste the Archon Connect info into your console. Once that is done, you have the ability to execute server commands. For server commands, you must prefix all command strings with Archon as this will tell the game to send the command to the server. If you don't, the game will apply the command to your computer's Team Fortress 2, which will either do nothing or cause something unwanted to happen. So for example, in case you wanted to execute a configuration file instead of exec space rgl underscore sixes underscore 5cp underscore scrim, you would type Archon space exec space rgl underscore sixes underscore 5cp underscore scrim. The following commands are generally useful for setting up Team Fortress 2 competitive matches. Remember to prefix these commands with Archon. Change level changes the map you are currently on. Don't use map as this will kick everyone currently on the server. Exec executes the configuration file, which is useful when changing a format or game mode. MP underscore time limit changes the round time limit. MP underscore win limit changes the win limit for rounds. There are additional commands that can be used on serve me servers that don't require Archon. Typing pause into the console will pause the entire server. This is useful when a player disconnects or is busy with something temporarily. Typing exclamation mark extend to your chat window will extend the server time if no other reservations are set after yours. Typing exclamation log on your chat window after a complete game of a competitive round will open the MOTD browser and show statistics of the match. More commands will be available in the description below.